Hey everyone, Indian banking sector is going through one of the best phase of its journey and we have already discussed it multiple times in the past. The bad loans are at decade low and there's a good momentum in deposit and advances growth. Basically, Indian banking sector is witnessing a new credit growth cycle that could potentially last for next few years. So this is a great time to invest in banking sector. However, it is not an easy task to identify the right banking stocks. The biggest reason is because while in other sector, earning growth is the biggest driver to gauge the success of the company, it is not the case in banking sector. Please try to understand this carefully. Banking sector is a bit complicated. For instance, a bank might grow its earning at a very fast rate, but what if this growth comes at a cost of poor credit standard where bank give loan to every Tom, Dick and Harry with poor credit profile. While in the short term, the growth would look amazing, but it would take just one to two bad loans for the bank to spike its NPA and that will destroy the earnings. That is the reason if you want to create wealth in the banking sector, you need to identify banks that have a very strong credit underwriting process so that the bank lend money to right set of people and ensure a high credit quality. And that's where the leader of the bank plays the most important role. For instance, there were two private banks that started their journey at similar time in early 2000. One of them generated nearly 300 times return and another went bankrupt. I'm talking about Kotak Mahindra and Yes Bank. Kotak Mahindra under the leadership of Uday Kotak generated nearly 300 times return and the journey so far, whereas Yes Bank under the leadership of Rana Kapoor got collapsed. Why? The answer is leadership. The leader is the anchor of the ship. Leader instills the vision and values that become the DNA of the company and that decides the future of the company. While Mr. Uday Kota created a world-class institution with best credit and writing process, Mr. Rana Kapoor compromised on credit quality just to fulfill his ambition of exponential growth. So growth is very important but not at the cost of credit quality and that is the reason I always bet on the banker and not on the bank. One of the example is IDFC First where I've been bullish for last two years and discussed it multiple times in previous videos. Now that IDFC First has generated great returns, everyone is talking about it, but I was confident on this bank even during the tough times because I always had faith in the leadership of Mr. V. Vedhanathan. And in this video, I want to talk about another very competent and ethical leader that has transformed a regional bank into a pan-India bank. I'm talking about Mr. Sham Srinivasan and the bank is Federal Bank. So the thumbnail of this video says Rahul Dravid of Indian Banking. I know that majority of people in stock market are looking for excitement with multi-bagger returns in no time. So they might find Federal Bank boring. But just like Dravid, Federal Bank is fundamentally sound and consistent. And the best part is valuation. Today Federal Bank is trading at a very attractive valuation with a price to book of just 1.46. No wonder, Federal Bank is preferred by both foreign and domestic institution that collectively hold 70.6% stake in the bank. And even Mr. Late Rakesh Junjunwala was very bullish on Federal Bank. So in this video, first of all, I want to take you through the journey of Mr. Sham Srinivasan and how he transformed an old regional bank into a pan-India bank. All right, let's get started. So Mr. Sham Srinivasan became the MD and CEO of Federal Bank in 2010. So it's been nearly around 13 years. Before joining Federal Bank, he had nearly 20 years of experience where he worked with leading multinational banks in India, Middle East and Southeast Asia. Mr. Srinivasan did his graduation in engineering from NIT Trichy in 1984. Then he did his MBA from IIM Calcutta in 1987. Then he worked with Citibank for almost 10 years and that set up a solid foundation for his banking journey. Later he joined Standard Chartered and worked as a country head of Malaysia and then country head of India. Eventually, in 2009, a Kerala-based lender Federal Bank decided to become a pan-India bank and Mr. Srinivasan joined Federal Bank in 2010 as MD and CEO. Just to give you an idea, when Mr. Srinivasan joined Federal Bank, it was doing a business of around 63,000 crore and today, Federal Bank has a business of nearly 4 lakh crore rupees. Being an avid follower of cricket, he says that I'm a great fan of Travel Travid and Federal Bank is like him, absolutely sound, it will do nothing wrong. He is very clear about the credit quality and says that we never compromise on credit standard just to support growth. And that is the sign of a solid bank that you can trust. The only problem is that as per RBI guideline, 
Mr. Srinivasan can remain the MD for maximum 15 years. So he has time till 2025, that is another two years. When Mr. Srinivasan was asked about the successor, he said that by 2024, this will be a bank everybody wants to work for and the board can find 10 better than Sham. Now let us explore the transformational journey of Federal Bank under the leadership of Mr. Sham Srinivasan. So Federal Bank was established in 1931 as a regional bank in Kerala. So it's been around 92 years old bank. For decades, Federal Bank was dominated by Kerala domiciled former central bankers or retired bureaucrats. However, in 2009, Federal Bank directors decided to make it a professionally run bank with pan-India presence and appointed Sham Srinivasan as MD and CEO. Over the years, Federal Bank has grown from just a Kerala-based regional bank into a pan-India bank. As you can see on the screen, bank had 1,333 branches as of Q3 of FI 23, out of which 597 branches in Kerala and remaining around 55% branches are spread all over the country. In terms of financial growth, its deposits have grown from 60,000 crore in FI14 to 2.13 lakh crore in FI23 at 15.2% CGR. Its advances have grown from 43,000 crore in FI14 to 1.74 lakh crore at 16.7% CGR. If you look at the loan book breakup, 54% business is retail and 46% is wholesale. Bank net interest margins have improved from 3.16 to 3.31% due to pivot to high margin lending products. Its asset quality has improved with gross NPA falling from 3.41% in FI21 to 2.36% in FI23 and net NPA has fallen from 1.19% to 0.69% in FI23. Bank's ROE that is return on equity has improved from 10.38% to 15.02% and ROA that is return on asset has improved from 0.85% to 1.28%. Bank's net interest income has grown at 14% CGR rate, while its operating profits have grown from 3,800 crore to 4,794 crore. It's in million and we are talking about in crore. There's a sharp fall in provisions. As a result, its net profits have grown from 1590 crore in FI21 to 3,010 crore at 38% CGR. Although now the provisions won't fall sharply, so net profit will not grow exponentially but there's a consistent growth expected ahead in coming quarter. Bank has declared its Q1 of FI24 highlights where both its deposits and advances have grown at 21% year on year. So Q1 of FI24 is also looking very promising. Overall, the bank has grown at a good rate in the last few years and one of the biggest reason is its digital transformation journey. Bank's mantra is digital at the fore and human at the core. In fact, if you visit their website, the first thing that you will notice is the digital avatar of Federal Bank with name Feddy, which is an AI-powered virtual assistant that can answer all your queries. So basically, Federal Bank has digitized its entire banking. For instance, a few years ago, it would take a few days to open an account with the bank and a few weeks to get a loan. But today, a customer can open an account with Federal Bank in less than five minutes using eKYC services facilitated by UIDI and regulated by RBI. You can get an auto loan in less than 30 minutes with a combination of eKYC, then digital ID verification, then online credit score and other data points received from other fiduciaries. So this is a huge transformation. Not only bank has transformed digitally, over the last few years, Federal Bank has entered into an asset light distribution model where the key focus is on growth via digital partnership. So Federal Bank has created a big digital ecosystem with 100 plus fintech partners to accelerate its growth journey and for that it has created 300 plus APIs to seamlessly collaborate with the fintech player. For instance, it has tied up with Bharat Pay for Payment, Rupec for Asset Light Lending, One Card for Credit Card and Epify that is FI Money and Jupiter for Neo Banking and so on. Today, Federal Bank has become one of the most preferred banking partner for fintech companies and neo banks. Some of its other partners include your Google, Pine Lab, Ripple, NSCCL, NSC, Pesa Bazaar, then NST, Buildesk, HDFC Ergo, then Save Gold, Clifin Technology, Karza, then Lentra, Sibyl, and so on. So, on one side, while Federal Bank is opening physical branches that have increased from 1,272 to 1,355 branches in FI23, the focus is on asset light and heavy distribution via FinTech Partner. And going forward, this digital ecosystem would play a crucial role in banks' growth. In addition to digital ecosystem, Federal Bank also has various subsidiaries that are further driving value creation. For instance, Federal Bank holds 73.2% stake in Fedbank Financial Service, which is a retail-focused NBFC 
offering gold loan and installment loan. In FY23, its profits have grown at 74%. Then in insurance, Federal Bank has partnered with Aegis to create Aegis Federal Life Insurance with 26% stake. Then Federal Bank has partnered with Equirus Capital for wealth management services like investment banking, insurance broking, portfolio management, where Federal Bank holds 19.8% stake. I hope you got a good picture of Federal Bank business. On the future growth, banking sector is the backbone of an economy and for Indian economy to grow, banks will play a crucial role. Thanks to the jam trinity of Jandan account, Aadhaar and mobile, it has opened a whole new world to serve the unbanked people in India, especially from rural part. So there's no doubt on the growth prospect for banking sector. Here, the key is to identify strong banks that have a very solid corporate governance structure with robust credit underwriting process. And Federal Bank checks all the parameter of a fundamentally strong bank with a mantra of digital at the fore and human at the core. Yet, if you look at the valuation of Federal Bank, it is one of the most attractively valued bank currently. So if you look at the stock price journey, it used to trade at levels of around 80-90 before COVID and then it tanked during COVID, but sharply recovered and made a new high of nearly 140. However, it's been 8 months since the bank share price has stagnated and currently it is in the range of around 135. At current levels, bank command a market cap of around 28,000 crore with a price to earning of 8.9 and price to book of 1.46. If you compare it with IDFC first, its price to book value is 2.4. So Federal Bank has a very attractive valuation at this point. I don't want to stress this video further. I hope this video gives you a good perspective about Federal Bank. Personally, I have invested in Federal Bank from levels of around 96 and sitting on around 40% profits. In case you want to learn more about my stock portfolio and stocks that I am buying along with my investment strategy, you can explore my weekly video series. And the link is in the description. I will see you in the next video. Till then, take care.